Hey, good morning, everybody. We are testing out our live equipment. We are down, where are we? Technically. No, really, like it's a little town. Alva. Alva. A L V A. Yeah. They were outside outside of uh, Fort Myers right now and um, wanted to do a mic check. Tons of rain already uh, last night when we were rolling in. I could not believe the rain bands, and it uh, looks like there's already some local flooding here in the area. We're going to head our way into uh, Fort Myers here throughout the day. So uh, you can keep it tuned right here. No live this morning. Every Everybody's uh, pretty much knows what's going on with this system. You should have already made your... Uh, preparations we got a 140 mile an hour hurricane uh, we had an eye wall replacement last night when an eye wall replace it goes through a little temporary kind of restructuring and you know as we've said a bazillion times it seems like these storms like to uh, peak right at the wrong time and uh, the nhc is not expecting this thing to weaken at all so we could see who knows we could see a little bit more but they're not they're not expecting to be any weaker than 140, which is a strong Category 4 hurricane. So uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about this, people. We're going to see uh, devastation along the coast. I mean, there's no no hype in that. Uh, major Category 4 hurricanes produce a lot of damage, a lot of roof damage, a lot of structural damage. Um, we're going to have widespread power outages that extend possibly to the other side of the state. Uh, hurricane warnings all the way through the state. Um, you know, this, uh, it's the real deal. I mean, it's a wide reaching system. We had the keys last night, had to uh, issue some storm surge warnings. Um, they got hit hard. We have higher than usual tides going on right now. So all this push coming in from the South, South Miami and, um, you know, the East Southern East coast has been feeling these squalls come off. We've, we've had 40 some tornado warnings last night when I went to bed and, and this storm, uh, it seems like you get storms that produce tornadoes and some that don't. And this one appears to be one of those that actually is going to uh, produce some strong storms throughout the day. So um, tornadoes throughout the whole peninsula today, uh, it does appear that it's going to exit and possibly, you know, remain a tropical storm as it reaches South Carolina, North Carolina. The good news is, at least for the northern part of the state, there is that strong wind shear and uh, dry air. So eventually it's just going to uh, remain weak. So that's kind of good news, but the rain is going to spread all the way to Carolinas, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, because of the shear. When you have a sheared system, all the rains get pushed off to the east. So if you're wondering why you got increased rain living in South Carolina, North Carolina, it's not because of, you know, a hard impact from uh, Ian. It's going to be those rains that are getting pushed off that way. Just looking at satellite, you can see the stretch of the uh, uh clouds basically uh going northeast that's our frontal boundary that's our year of the front this these fronts have ruled the season uh this one's no different we had a strengthening uh system unfortunately in the lower gulf every every system it seems like does that and this one uh did and um it, it is uh stocked a lot of people because um you know the, the the biggest misconception I had here and talking to folks is three four days ago we had an H possibly by the um, panhandle, I mean just a hurricane, but we also had an M just off the coast of Tampa and in Sarasota right where we're at now. And you know we always said if this thing turned just a few degrees and made landfall, it's going to be land, making landfall a day or two earlier, and it's going to be making landfall as a major and not a, a weaker category one. So. Uh, that's where we're at. We got a uh, big storm surge on the way. I think, Phil, what did we say? The high tide was what, 3 o'clock? 3, 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon is high tide in this area where I'm at, down in Fort Myers, um, Cape Coral. Um, the Iowa is large, so the big question is who's, you know, the, the, the winds are expanding from center now. And looking at satellite, we're, we're going to, you know, Bradenton, Sarasota, uh, Manatee, even Pinellas County, you're going to be getting a lot of these outer bands that are being pushing up because the system's widened now so inland you know that was the biggest uh shocker to people with charlie and irma you know i've been stressing inland effects are going to be the big shock with these uh winds overnight tonight and uh you know the, it's just never it's never just a coastal event never just a coastal event and some of these flooding rains luckily that wild uh two feet of rain coast to coast some of that went down it makes sense now i like i said yesterday i've never seen rain totals that high so i i don't know um 
hopefully they they were a little overestimated, but we still have patches of 20, 30 inches in the state uh, officially. So that is something to, that's going to be a secondary story, no doubt about it. Um, we're going to see 20, 30, 40 inches of rain, possibly 30, you know, in spots. I saw one map that, that said 40 inches of rain. I mean, that's because our system's going to slow down a little bit and uh, just constantly dump this uh, golf moisture being fed in from that front and uh, just the golf in itself. So, you know, the rains are already reaching far north. We got squall lines. These things are going to be producing dusty winds throughout the day, uh, isolated tornadoes. Uh, this is going to be all the way from the Keys to the Bahamas to the East Coast, all the way to Augustine and Jacksonville and Brunswick and storm surge, just like we saw with Irma, is going to be uh, a big deal up in the north east part of florida especially the st john's river um that is the area that unfortunately is already very maxed out with their water totals and uh could be seeing some big problems for the northern uh central parts of the state of florida here with rain and uh it's already waterlogged you know everything that, that tells me uh from experience is that we're going to see this prolonged wind event and a lot of rain does not doesn't sit very well with trees Trees' root systems don't hold up very well, and we haven't had a really big storm like this in a while. That means uh, this is kind of nature's pruning, they call it, where uh, we're going to start to see dead limbs and dead trees, you know, break easier uh, than, than, you know, Irma was really the last big storm that came through the state that knocked down a lot of trees. So we're probably going to see a new batch of trees and limbs falling down, causing widespread power outages. And then you add that with the, the already saturated grounds and increased rain. Uh, you're going to see a lot of trees down, and that's unfortunately going to bring a ton of power outages. So that's something that I have not seen discussed anywhere yet is the power outages. Uh, we're going to see power outages widespread across a big chunk of the state. So, man, be ready for that, unfortunately. And uh, supply chain issues, uh, very, very low right now. So we're we're going to see some areas that are going to have to wait a little bit longer. But as far as where I'm at, it was a weird experience driving down here last night. As soon as we got to about Braden and Sarasota, it was very eerie. Uh, we kept seeing a stream of ambulances going north on Interstate 75. A lot of that's FEMA uh, evacuations of hospitals down here. So we probably saw a good dozen or two dozen uh, ambulances going northbound. Every gas station was completely wrapped up with cellophane around the pumps. We, we got lucky and did find one station and he said, no, they were done. And Luckily, uh, I told him, I'm like, hey, man, I'm media. I'm going down south. They're like, okay, okay. And ironically, uh, a fan pulled up. He's like, Mike. And uh, they gave me a little credibility. They didn't want to give me gas. So thank goodness for the good Samaritan at the Sunoco. Um, <clears throat> the employee let us, we were the last gas uh, at that station. And uh, we filled up. And I got 20 gallons in the back, so I'm, I'm good. I got enough to get home even if I ran out. Uh, let's see what other weird things. So we went to a Wawa that was open and it looked like a madhouse trying to get food. I've never seen a, a store with absolutely not one thing on the shelf. I mean, there was three donuts and the employee like saw us walking toward them and she like grabbed them, hoarded them. <laughs> like that was the last three donuts on the planet. So the good, the good thing for me with chasing, uh, Ian is I'll probably get end up losing five or 10 pounds, which I needed to do anyway. So I'm living on a couple of bags of Doritos. I do have my Brew Crew, uh, last year we chased Ida, and uh, Brew Crew hooked me up with three tubs of storm supplies. I have it all. We did have some food in there, which is great, so I'm going to snag some of that out for the trip today. And got my emergency water, and, you know, we're good to go here. Um, I'm safe. The family's safe. You know, we, we shipped them out, um, literally shipped them out, not in UPS, but in their car. And we're going to play it safe down here. We're going to try to get some video. Um, we're going to head down closer to the water to try to capture some of the surge. It looks like some of the stronger winds might end up sneaking a little north because of this widening eye wall. So don't focus on that center line. It appears this storm has had a northern component with this uh, its whole life. Um, so we're going to see big storms all the way up to Braden and Sarasota. It could get some wind, big winds north port. So this is just not just a center line event, uh, folks. This is going to be a wide reaching um storm and like i said when you get an eye wall replacement it just expands that wind field even more uh and that and that's something that you know too many people just kind of focus on that on that uh, eye wall and, they, and the center line and they think that's you know the only thing that that really matters but the nhc is doing daily up or um oh holy crap holy moly we just had an update 
Pressure down to 936. Wind speeds now 155. Wind speeds are 155. Rapidly intensifying. Oh my God, exactly. This is exactly what we talked about, people. I mean, common sense, man. I mean, this has been my fear from, from the get-go, talking about any storm entering the lower gulf. I mean, I don't know why models didn't see it, why no one, no one saw it. The Gulf of Mexico, the loop currents, uh, we got a 155-mile-an-hour hurricane. This is borderline Category 5. Or what is the cutoff? 156? Holy crap. This, this is unbelievable. Yes, it's one. It's two miles away from a Category Five. We we have a potential Category Five, nine thirty six pressure system nearing the coast. It doesn't get any worse. Doesn't get any worse. Jesus, unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm looking at some stuff here. I got to post that. That that's just. That's going to, uh, God, that's going to bring winds even deeper into the state. We're going to have Category 3, Category 4 winds well inland. Uh, we're, we're going to see widespread damage uh, dozens of miles from the coast. Absolutely no doubt about it. We're going to have people that had no idea this was coming inland. Um, terrible. I knew it. Jesus. So the uh, trying to find the wind field. Uh, still, hurricane force winds only forty miles from center. That's the only good news, at least. But tropical storm force winds are one hundred seventy-five miles from center. That's why we have. Uh, God almighty. All right. Well, there you go. That's your update. So we're going to be streaming. Uh, be safe. I'm going to post this new update, guys. Uh, 155 mile an hour major hurricane Ian is rapidly strengthening as uh, Mother Nature said she would. All right. We'll be back live. I'm safe. I hope you're safe. Um, at this point, you should have already made your prep plans and uh, just watch your radar. Listen to your local news stations. Listen to your local National Weather Service. If you have a weather radar, uh, you know, weather radio make sure you play it make sure you have your alerts on uh for the any tornadoes and, and this is a good time if you have power make sure your power banks are charged your phones are charged um you know make sure that your um all your electronic devices because you know they they go out and then you're lost so uh it's a good time to make sure all that stuff's charged up ready to go just in case uh, you lose power during during the heart of the storm and you got to keep up so i do have links on my website uh of course spaghettimodels.com on the upper left there are NOAA weather link sites that you can listen directly to your local national weather service offices so if you don't know how to listen to that there is a link on the site um that you can listen to and stay safe all right all right mwp uh thinking of you we'll be back live later okay